You seen them? They're 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 popping. That excites me. <laughs> There's another one. The elusive November topwater. It might be here. Welcome to today's video, brought to you by Mystery Tackle Box. It is some father-son time out here. My dad was gonna go out in his kayak. He's like, I think I'm gonna go kayak fishing tomorrow. I said, Dad, I think it's supposed to be 25 mile an hour winds. And hang on one second, I gotta unhook the boat. So I was like, Dad, if you really wanna go fishing that bad, I'll just take you. Come on, hop in the boat. Always revel in the experience to get to fish with my dear old dad. How you doing? Might have a fishing freak over here. It's always good too. Fishing freaks are gonna be out today. This is, this is definitely, when you get into fall mode, the dedicated come out here. It's cold. What's that? I'm Lake Fort guy. You do? Come on over here for a second. All right, what's your name? Grayson. What's the fishing report so far this morning? Mainly just top water. I noticed there was some, some popping around the, the shore over there. Uh, I was using a crank earlier. So your crankbait? Might have to let us fish over here on this other side if you don't mind. All right, I hope you catch a man. No matter what we catch today, it's always a good, good way to start off right there. I, I knew when I saw that young man, Grayson, over there on the shoreline, I saw myself and him, because I was like, what young man is gonna be out here in, you know, it's 50 degrees outside, it's November, it's seven o'clock in the morning. Most kids are playing Xbox, he's out here casting away. I hooked him up with some Guggen baits. Hopefully he slays some fish out here. I did see a shad get pot. I'm seeing shad dad. I might have to let you just get on that trolling motor and get after it for a second while I tell him about what is in today's mystery tackle box. The November dish. We might we might catch some fish up shallow. So what's going on is these shad are shallow today. This is good because that gives us opportunities to go flipping. If there's shad up shallow, we can do flipping. And here's what we got inside of the pro box. Now, if you guys want to get signed up, use the link down in the description. It will automatically take you to a page where code Guggen is applied and you get $10 off your first box subscription. And these boxes are solid, guys. I'm telling you, you're gonna save money on these boxes. Chatterbait Bucktail, right off the bat, starting it out with one of the baits that's probably caught more fish than Dagum Santa Claus. Instead of a actual rubber skirt, you've got a hair skirt better in colder water. That's where you see a lot of the buck tails being used. Oh my gosh, Dad. Was that a carp? Tell me that was a carp splash. We've also got a square bill crankbait. Always good in these conditions as well. You wanna fish a little bit slower, but good to bump around cover. Uh, this is the Excite XB5. Striking rodent. It's a beaver style bait. Green pumpkin, excellent. How many fish have been caught on green pumpkin color? Somebody let me know in the comments. Probably over a million though. Let's go Carl's Amazing Baits. Carl, the guy that wears the vest. The word amazing is probably a stretch for Carl, uh, but this bait does look really good. Comes in clam. Ooh, look at that. That's like a blue pearl crawl right there. That looks fantastic. Uh, Big Bite Baits Coontail Worm, which is basically like a uh, ring fry looking worm. Great for Carolina rigging if you want to finesse fish that. Then we've got a Lunker Hut Kraken Lipless. As you guys know, cold water. Uh, lipless crankbaits, good in cold water. They're, they're very good in early spring, but in this type situation, bass are kind of schooling around little points and things like that. Could be very key. This is a jig head, so we could use this for shaky heading. Mystery Talk Box, thank you. Three ducks just landed over there beautifully. Let's get some tied on, let's get to fishing. Some bushes out on a point right now. I'm using this furry chatterbait. Kind of crawl over the tops of them. There's just no way there's not a bass on this point or leading into this cove. I just refuse to believe it. I'm gonna do a little flipping. Something's gonna happen in here. Okay. Dad, we're not leaving here until we catch one. Ought to be one right here on this little ridge. Oh, come on, right on that point. Oh, I broke my line. Son of a uh, Where did you <laughs> score those gloves? Do you like those? What is that? I'm like powering the. Like harnessing the power of the carp there. Uh, yeah. Look at the gander it does. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's a, you know, those are carp. The carp uh, bring me luck. I see. Yeah, lots of carp out here. They might be stifling my luck today. I think so. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to take them off. Really did not want to leave this cove. 
until a fish had been sniffed. I had one bite, did not land it, did not feel like a big bite, so I don't feel too bad about it, but these fish are either out deep or there are some up in this brush type stuff. I've seen shad back in there, but it's super difficult to fish and there's so much of it, you might get a bite, you know, every once in a blue moon. There's just so much cover for them to get in. Literally everywhere you throw, we gotta sniff one. My hands smell like baby lotion right now. You know how terrible that is? I need them to smell like nice, sloppy, big, large mouth. That's what I need. Oh gosh, what a big head shake. This could be a real big large mouth. Here we go now. Now it's fun. I'm trying to get something big on one of these ledges where all these white bass are. And I've either got a big catfish or a uh, big largemouth that's wanting to stay down. I've got a really, really light rod. And I was using a little blade bait. Just hope that it stays on. I gotta take it real easy. This is, I wanna say this is like eight pound braid in a 10 pound liter. I mean, just look at that rod. Oh! That's how it happens. I've seen it happen many times like that. Dad gum, that was a big one. I've been waiting on that bite. All these white bass out here, and I was like, I know there's gonna be one on these le this ledge. Sometimes what you're faced with is uh, not the conditions conducive for shallow fishing. I, I really don't feel like I've done this box justice. There's a lot of good stuff in here. I wasn't equipped for the deep stuff, the real deep stuff, which I'm sure a lot of you don't fish that deep anyway. I'm addicted to, to deep fishing in, in the cold months. And that's why I like to stay out there just because I see big groups of fish huddled. You don't have to. And especially on warm days like this, there's always fish that move up in the shallows. I also realize that not a lot of you have uh, big boats to go out there in the middle of the lake on windy days and it's not always going to be the, the best conditions for getting out there and dangling deep. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take you guys on an adventure to go find some smaller waters. Use that this box awesome. the way it... What's that? That was awesome. That was awesome? I got a good uh, a commitment putting the boat on the trailer on a windy day. It took some uh, it took some skills. I'm not going to lie. LFD did a good job on the back end as well. You guys know I don't like to quit and I definitely don't want to uh, not catch fish on anything in the box. That's terrible. Even though me and my dad had fun out here today, we got a lot of a lot of white bass, and I hooked into uh, one of the biggest largemouth that I've hooked into out here, and I unfortunately lost it. Wish you guys uh, could have seen. Wish we all could have seen it. A lot of the baits that are in the box are better suited for shallow fishing, and this lake, the way it's setting up right now, 31 foot of water is like where everything is and the brush is just a lot of briars and sticky stuff that makes it very difficult. Let's turn the page and let's go dangle some bass in some other shallower water. We had a very, very good time fishing today, but we have sp left you some time to wash off your truck. Man, I have never seen a dirtier truck in my life. I mean, where have you been? Yeah, I went out, I went out to the ranch and I got, her, I got her dirty. I know you wanted to wash it. I know that's why you brought it up. Dangle. Dangle it. <laughs> oh man. Let me get my truck wrapped and dangle it next year. At the Bucky's. The truck's full of gas. Got two trolling motor batteries active. We'll make it just fine. We'll catch fish between then, between the trolling motor dies. That's like my new, uh, what do you call it, limiter, regulator. Like if I'm not catching fish before my trolling motor dies, I'm doing something wrong. You need a what? You need a knife? Oh, pliers. Oh, I think that's my top water. <laughs> it actually is yours. And it's found its way to that camo seat. Look at all those ducks getting up right now. A beautiful sight. This bad boy right here is loaded with trees, it looks like. Water is so still, nice crisp morning. <laughs> oh, it feels good, it feels great. Let's dump her in and let's see what this one has to offer. Looking at these, uh... I wanna get hammered on this bucktail chatterbait thing. Water stained. I'm gonna go ahead and say this right now. Uh, is there five pounders caught today? They're, well, I'm gonna say yes, but I think they're, there's probably a good chance that there's gonna be a 
fish that doesn't come out of one of these trees. Straight braid needs to be an option. Straight braid? Look at all the, it hasn't, the trees haven't even uh, lost their, their limbs and stuff yet. This is like brand new stuff. Got him right there. Good fish. Big and what? Was that me or you? That's you. On the GoPro? First fish. First. First fish coming off this thing on the bucktail. Okay. It's a donk. That's a donk. I mean, it loaded up and I was like, what? Oh, come here. Oh, man. You just made me think about that. We got bait balls out there. Yes. Yeah, we got bait balls right behind us. There we go, guys. On that little bucktail. Isn't that cool? That's a four-ski. Solid. My gosh. Okay, now we're... Now it's happening. I gotta get a sniff. Oh, that is delicious right there. That is beautiful. Okay, now we're talking. The hell? We got nothing. We've already boated two fish, which is good. I'd like to boat some more. Nightmare battery scenario has entered the picture. Steer it right. Look at that fish. That's a juicy one. Oh, holy! Freer oh, fish. Both. He was up there. Ah. Got him. Oh, my line just started. I, I never felt him. My line just went woo. Yes, sir. There we go. A little flipping fish right there. Not a giant, but boy, he took it so nicely. Switch it up here. See if we can get one on this little crawl unit. NTB's doing a good job with their boxes. 17 feet right here. Just gonna drop into this little. Ooh, look at that rock right there by the tree. Mm. Tasty dangle spot. Mm. Ooh, there it goes. Oh, he hit it on the drop. Oh gosh, dude, I thought it was gonna be huge. <laughs> right when it dropped off, I was like, oh, it's a big A little tiny. There's gotta be another one down there on that ledge. Oh, God. I'm so excited, I'm still holding a fish. Yeah, look at this. You got everything. Okay. Oh, barn burner. Up in the shallows with that jig. Not, not exactly uh, what I like to think of when I'm throwing a jig and craw. You know what? I never felt that fish though. I was like, am I on a stick? Just kind of got heavy. Rob, I'm just going to take a little, little gander into your terminal box here, if you don't mind. Ooh, we're going to poke that one in the nose there. Make a nice little, little finesse presentation, but wow, that wind is kicking up. So you know what that means? We're going to put on a square bill. I'm feeling this little uh, this little XB5 right now. Look at this little guy. If you would have just calmed down, there wouldn't have been ouch, any issue. Ouch! Ouch! Ooh, those hooks are sharp. All right, so that's always good when you're tying on a square bill, and then there's a fish flopping on the deck that was just caught on a square bill. That's what you want to see right there. So, a lot of these fish are suspended, y'all. That's why. Uh, this is why these moving baits have worked and it seems like the fish we've caught on the bottom are around six foot for the most part. Once you get in, you know, 15, 20 feet of water, there's fish that are suspended in that six foot zone. Oh, I see some shads. Oh, got him right that tree. Oh, here we go. There you go. Right by that tree, gave it a little pause sesh. Smacked that square bill, baby. That was a little excite baits square bill. Just gave it a little pause. Popped it. Nice. I haven't smelled like watermelon with that. Got him. Got him, Miller? Got him. Yep. Got him. Come here, baby. Oh, we got it good. Perfect timing because I'm hooked on a log. Ooh, he ate it. Back here in like tops of the trees, just let it float up. He ain't a fat one, he needs to eat a little bit more. 
to hit that rogue line. This. Steven, hey, I got another one. You got another one? Yeah, I got another one. Big one? Oh, he came off. Hey, oh, uh, Shad, Shad right here. Oh, I just had one chasing mine. Chased right by the boat. Got it. You got him? Yeah. Better one. There you go. There you go. There you go. You got a buddy with him? I might. You have a buddy oh, with him? Oh. Not a bad fish. There's something about towards that tree. Look how he's got this square bill, dude. You know what that was? Look at that. That's where I caught that big one. I think it was I'm, on the back side of this tree. I think there's something going on yeah. there. So we've got we've got like one tree right here that's literally stacked with some fish. And they are loving it. This is fun. Whoop, 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 whoop. Got ourselves a little mid-channel dweller there. The fish was right in the middle of the channel, y'all. That's how they are rolling up in here as we go back in this creek. You know, in the beginning of the creek, they're still suspended. In the back, they're kind of in some grass, but out here, they're just relating to that little ledge. I actually caught that one on the, the big bite worm. Just dragging it around on the ledge. He absolutely gobble gurped it on the piles. That, my friends, is the story of the day. I think we're gonna end on that one. Square bills, they kind of just get it done right now. Yeah, that's actually very true. He decided to actually like eat a crankbait. You know how they eat a worm? Yeah. Sometimes they do that with hard baits and they eat your glove as well. We're done. What an incredible dangle today, y'all. Absolutely killed it. Now it's time to put this thing on the trailer, which I don't know how this is gonna work out to be honest with you. This gravel ramp, two-wheel drive, soggy. Hmm. We'll see. It's all part of the adventures. All right, Rob. Uh oh, this is the no bueno. Stuck here. Yeah. Boots had to come back out. We did it. Daggum did it, y'all. It was almost one of those deals where I had to like almost call Stephanie and be like, honey, I'm gonna be here overnight. We're gonna be here, but we got it. We got it out. Thanks to uh, dedication, hard work, a lot of gasoline, some half decent tires with a little bit of tread on them. <laughs> and uh, some, just some good old fashioned putting our heads together. We figured out the right angle for the dangle. If y'all wanna check out any of the baits that were used today, you can check them out at Carl's. And if you guys wanna get signed up for the boxes, you know what to do. Guggen code is applied when you click the link down in the description. All right, thank you guys for being here. You know what to do. Subscribe, hit all the notification things that come up. I don't know, do those things do anything anymore, Rob? No. Not really, okay, just hit them anyway. It's a self-confidence thing. Love you guys as always. Hope you're having a blessed day in the great outdoors, and I'll see y'all.